for coming. Good to see you all. And uh, before we start, I would like to introduce a visiting nun from St. Louis. And uh, this is uh, uh, Venerable Kong Yan. Let's welcome her. <laughs> Um, and also, I would like to invite someone to read the sutra for us. Uh, Lynn, do you want to do it? Okay. Uh, please read from the first paragraph until the sixth realization. Mm -hmm. One to six. Uh, yes, yes. From yeah. Review the past and also read the six realization that we wanted to study today. Okay, please. Yes. The six realization, the contents basically concentrate on two messages. How can we eradicate? our anger, how can we practice generosity equally with everyone. And uh, it's not easy, but it's very essential for us to understand and also to achieve. So today <coughs> I'm going to explain the contents of this sutra first some important key words or key points I wanted to explain first. Then I'm going to save some time for you to discuss. There are a lot of uh, things we need to discuss yeah, based on this uh, paragraph's teaching. The sixth realization is the awareness that poverty creates more hatred and anger, which in turn creates more evil. Sometimes I don't understand when English-speaking people say evil. What does it mean? But Venerable Tina Han translates certain words into evil. Actually, according to Chinese translation, uh, it simply means negative comments, bad conducts. Okay, so uh, original Chinese character is bad uh, comments, uh, wrongdoing, wrongdoing. <coughs> poverty is the key word. What is the meaning of a poverty? Basically, uh, according to other teachers, we can divide poverty into two categories. The first one is the poverty of lacking living necessities. Today I wanted to eat, but in my kitchen I don't have enough food. And also I need to wear, but somehow uh, not enough clothes to wear. Perhaps I wanted to buy something, I don't have enough money. This is a kind of a poverty okay, in a society. Sometimes because we don't have enough money or material necessities, then we may commit crimes in a society. Why people want to rob other people, steal stuff from other people, because of uh, the poverty. I rem remember that uh, last year, <coughs> uh, monks and nuns at the J Buddha Temple, they told me uh, 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 one incident. They reported this to me. Venerable Hang Yi, we saw a male jumping from our fence, went to our kitchen, took all kinds of fruits and food from our kitchen. For many times, he's repeating this kind of action uh, 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 in the past uh, year for many times. 
I said, uh, it's not right. If he needs food, he should let us know. We can give some fruits, food to him. He doesn't have to, you know, steal from the kitchen, from the temple. I asked them, why don't you all tell this person it's not right to do this? <laughs> but somehow they couldn't communicate with this person. And uh, one day I was in the temple. Then I saw he uh, carrying some bags from the kitchen again, full of food, fruits. Then I met him over there in front of the uh, temple. Oh, he's the person who's taking food from our own kitchen. I said, who are you? Why you are taking food from the kitchen? I am a member of this temple. <laughs> <laughs> I said, even you are a member of this, uh, this temple. I'm the abbot of the temple. You have to get my permission in order to take the food from uh, refrigerators. I said, uh, don't continue to do this. It's not lawful. It's not right. If you are a member, this is not a Buddhist way. Without others' permission, taking something from others, it's not right. Of course, I feel sympathy to him, but I still wanted to let him know it's not permitted. I said, if you come back in this way again, I'm going to call the police. Okay. And uh, this time I will let you go, carry the food with you. And uh, he went to the front, jumped from the fence, got outside, ride his bicycle, and back home. Fortunately, he never came back. Okay, he listened to me. And uh, so sometimes poverty, poor uh, condition, Perhaps it's going to make someone who uh, commit certain kind of uh, wrongdoing. This is a kind of a poverty. Another po poverty is the poverty of lacking virtue and wisdom. The poverty of lacking virtue and wisdom. Sometimes we may be rich, I have money, I have you know, wealth, but sometimes lacking virtues, wisdom, we also can commit crime. So poverty, poverty doesn't mean you are poor in money, in material. Sometimes poverty also means we don't have uh, morality, we don't have wisdom to make good decisions. I remember uh, not long ago in uh, China, Wuhan city, <clears throat> one day a lady, she went to airport. She had a flight to go to uh, France to participate a special meeting in uh, France. She earned her doctor degree in China. She's on certain studies. So in France, they invite her to go to Paris, participate in a special meeting. But somehow she was late. She was late. And uh, with uh, some family members, they were late. So the counter agent say, right now we cannot do anything more. The plane is you know, uh, ready to leave, to fly. You are late. We cannot book you, and uh, we cannot do anything to help you. She was so angry, slapped the agent in front of the pu public. There was a big news in Wuhan city. Then I saw this news from my iPhone and uh, English news. I said, how come this lady, educated lady, well-educated lady, She's a professional per, uh, uh, person, but somehow lack of virtue, lack of wisdom. Even we are well educated, sometimes we are still in poverty to commit certain kind of a wrongdoing. So today I wanted to explain you know, 
the word property in this uh, two ways. And okay, after these uh, studies, then we are going to know even we are poor in wealth, if we have virtues, wisdoms, we don't commit crime. Of course, if you are rich with virtues and wisdom, you will be wonderful. Okay, because we, we know how to handle those uh, wealth. <clears throat> and uh, uh, after this uh, study, then let's move to the next uh, 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 teaching. Why we need to practice generosity? Why? As a bodhisattva, um, Angelina, do you know the meaning of bodhisattva? No? Okay, I need to explain this to you. Bodhisattva means a practitioner who has loving kindness to others. I wanted to be kind, you know, to others. Also, I wanted to be generous to others. We call this person bodhisattva. Bodhisattva can be everywhere, as long as, as you have loving kindness. And also, you wanted to show your compassion to others. You wanted to donate everything you have, you know, to share with others. You can be called bodhisattva. So bodhisattva means a person who has great compassion, loving kindness to others. Also wishing to share what he has with others. Bodhisattva. As a bodhisattva, how can we reduce the problem in the society? Basically, we need to practice generosity. Generosity is a way to help the whole society reduce crimes, reduce problems, reduce conflicts. Then probably you are going to ask, how are we going to practice generosity? There are three ways for us to do. To do. When we talk about generosity, usually we are thinking, let me donate some money. That is just part of it, not the whole generosity. Actually, we divide generosity into two categories. Of course, if you have uh, uh, wealth, you can share your wealth with others. Donating materials, food, or money, or even provide living uh, space for others. This one of donation, one of you know, the practice. Also, we can share our knowledges, our wisdom with others. Today, I may not be able to share my wealth uh, uh, with you because I'm, I'm a monk. I'm not that rich. But I can share my understanding of the Dharma. And uh, let you know what I know in my mind. I wanted to share everything I know about Buddha's teaching to you. This is another kind of a uh, donation, another kind of a, you know, practice on generosity. Sometimes the people don't want to share knowledge. You know, they want to keep certain kind of knowledge within them. Yeah. Like Chinese medicine, the remedy of the Chinese medicine, long time ago, they wanted to keep in the family, only teaching science to know the uh, prescription. Even though daughters can learn, you wanted to keep those knowledges in the secret. So we lost a lot of uh, good uh, what, medica med uh, medication practices yeah, in China. Sometimes we wanted to share. If you wanted to help others, sometimes not just donate money, try to educate others. Especially if we have enough experience, we have wisdom, share wisdom with others. That's so important. The last one, the third way for uh, uh, the practice is to comfort others when other people you know, have fear in their, in their hearts. Comfort others, protect others, make other, peop other people feel very safe to be with you. There's another kind of uh, generosity. 
can we do this? Of course, you don't have to be the president of the United States in order to provide you know, this kind of uh, comfort. You don't have to be a mayor. You don't have to be a soldier. Actually, thinking about in everyday life, whenever I see people, I want to make people around me be uh, feeling comfortable. That is a, a way. Once, <coughs> I think before we built a boat center, even we never, you know, we didn't uh, uh, purchase, uh, purchase the land yet. We rent Camp Allen for our family camp. <coughs> the first day, I was in a, a, a place with some members. Suddenly, the, uh, the sun uh, was gone, no lights anymore. And also, the area is without street lights, no street lights. It's totally in dark, darkness. Suddenly, a lady was a little afraid. She's over 60 years old. Venerable, how can we do? We don't have a flashlights, no lights at all. And uh, the, the, uh, the road was bumpy. It's not that smooth. Okay. I told her, I said, how about let me hold your hand. You walk with me a little step by little step. Even myself, I couldn't see the street. And uh, so I accompanied her for about 20 minutes, walking out of the darkness. You know, after that, she remembers all the time. A few days ago, she was in, uh, in the temple. Now she's over 75 years old. She always feels very, very appreciated uh, for the kind of help that I gave her on that uh, evening. Providing comforts, providing safeties for others is also a way to show generosity. Okay. This is uh, something we can do. You don't have to reach, very rich, in order to practice generosity. There are many ways. Okay. <clears throat> okay. We practice generosity. This is the Bodhisattva's way in order to reduce problems, problems in a society. Okay. How can we help the society? This is the way. <clears throat> but, when we practice generosity, we have to be able to <clears throat> treat everyone equally. Okay. That is uh, not easy. When practicing, gen uh, practicing generosity, bodhisattvas consider everyone, friends and enemies alike, as equal. That's difficult. <laughs> you are right. It's, it's difficult. It's difficult. Why we need to treat everyone equally? Why we have to practice generosity in this kind of a manner? I think the first goal is to cultivate equanimity inside our mind. The first one, the first goal is to cultivate equanimity. There are four unlimited, unlimited minds in Buddhism. We always encourage meditation practitioners to study, to practice loving kindness, compassion, and empathetic joy. The last one is equanimity. What is the, the definition of equanimity? Actually, we need to understand. I think the first meaning of equanimity means be calm. Be able to maintain your peaceful mind, mental stage in you. Be calm. Be able to maintain your inner peace in you. So when we do this kind of uh, practice, I wanted to share, I wanted to give, I wanted to practice generosity. We cannot use business style, business style to practice generosity. A lot of times when we do something for others, we are thinking in business way. I gave you this fruit, how are you going to repay me back tomorrow? <laughs> Sometimes we are thinking something, it's not simple. 
were thinking, you know, others, how others react. And also, uh, if I do something for you, uh, the way you treat me, I, f I don't feel satisfied. Then there are a lot of uh, possibilities that we can accumulate negative feelings after we practice generosity. So practice generosity, if we wanted to achieve the stage of equanimity, we have to be free from three forms, three forms, three attachments. First, you don't want to think, I'm the one who can give. You don't want to think, oh, I'm the one I can give. You don't want to think about yourself. That is one kind of a form. Second, you don't want to always think, you are the one who received my gift. Also, you don't want to always try to repeat, repeat. Yesterday, I gave you a beautiful box. Oh, that is uh, so beautiful. I gave this box to you. You wanted to repeat, repeat all those kind of forms in your mind. That is not a way for us to achieve equanimity. So equanimity basically maintaining inner peace, calmness. Even you do a lot of generosity in your daily life. Okay. Maintain your calmness, no attachment. Okay. Be free from those three forms. This is the way we practice generosity. And also, why we wanted to treat everyone equally. As a bodhisattva, you don't want to limit your ability just for one or two people. You wanted to develop your ability, your kindness, your compassion toward all people. When we talk about all people, that means including your friends and enemies. <laughs> Why we hate someone? Actually, sometimes we don't want to blame our other side or 100%. Sometimes we have to think about ourselves. And also, when we say, I don't like this person, do you feel you can gain any benefits from this kind of attitude? No. Today I wanted to share this teaching from Venerable Yin Shun. <coughs> According to Venerable Yin Shun's uh, 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 writing on the uh, Five Skandhas uh, 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 book, Wu Yun Lun, <coughs> Five Skandhas, explaining what are those Five Skandhas, <coughs> Five Aggregates. Venerable Yin Shun says, as a human being, we have all this kind of uh, mental formation activities inside us. I think we have two categories for those activities. One is greed, another one is anger or hatred. Venerable Yin Xuan says, <clears throat> if a person who has a certain kind of a greed, sometimes it's still okay in a worldly standard. Sometimes it's still okay. For example, oh, I saw this young lady. She's very, very lovable. I wanted to marry her. In Buddhism, according to you know, the Buddha's teaching, it's also a part of greed. I wanted to have this person. I wanted to marry her and uh, invite her to be uh, my life, part of my life. So this is a, still a kind of a greed. In a worldly standard, it's okay. You can marry someone you like, that's okay. Form a good family, a happy family, that's okay. Also some people, they say, oh, I enjoy doing business. I wanted to make money to take care of my, you know, my family, let them uh, improve uh, their living uh, uh, standard. Or I wanted to make money, you know, 
uh, to take care of my employees. As long as you are doing the business according to the law, no cheating, uh, no <laughs> wrongdoing. Basically, in Buddhism, it's still allowed it. I wanted to make money, also part of a greed, but it's okay. In a worldly standard, it still can be beneficial. But when you compare anger with greed, anger is 100% negative. Anger is 100% negative. It's not good for you, it's not good for others. Anger just like a fire. It's going to burn you, also burn others. You know, when we make friends, it's not easy. Okay, I know you for a few years. I wanted to, you know, be, to be friendly with you in certain time in order to be good friends with you. Build up friendship is going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort. But destroying friendship is so easy. This tree in the forest, taking maybe you know, 100 years, a 1,000 years to grow. But when we have a forest f uh, fire, it's going to take a few hours to burn down the whole tree. Is that right? Just like human beings' relationship. We spend 10 years to build friendship. But because of anger, we can destroy this friendship within 10 minutes. So anger is useless. It doesn't pro provide any benefits for anyone. That's why when we feel I have anger inside me, I don't like someone, I hate someone, think about what kind of benefits you are going to get from this kind of thinking. Okay. Also, in my feeling, I always, always remind myself, in my daily life, I rather to have more friends with me, not more enemies. Is that right? I wanted to have more friends around me, not more enemies. In case someone I don't like, I still wanted to find a way. How can I communicate with this person? How can I, can I establish good friendship with this person? This is the attitude we should have as a bodhisattva. But over here, I wanted to um, read this to you and I was explaining something. They do not, bodhisattvas, they do not condemn anyone's past wrongdoing, nor do they hate even those who are presently doing evil. According to Chinese translation, do not condemn uh, is in different kind of uh, translation. In Chinese translation, it says, do not always remember someone's wrongdoing in the past. Do not always remember someone's wrongdoing in the past. That means you cannot forgive this person. You always remember someone's wrongdoing. It's not good. It's not good. Yeah. We, we should uh, be able to uh, forgive and also for our own benefits, sometimes just forget. Okay. But this person cannot forgive or forget. Do not always memorize, remember, keep something in your mind every day about someone's wrongdoing. I think uh, condemn maybe, it, uh, maybe it's not 100% right. Condemn, uh, I check on the dictionary. Condemn means uh, 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 serious not agree with someone's doing. Uh, seriously, or what do you call it? Profoundly not uh, uh, agree or uh, a strong sentence to punish someone. I wanted to sentence someone, you know. Uh, uh, for certain punishment, condemn. So sometimes when I check on the uh, meaning of condemn, condemn uh, con condemnation, then I feel maybe it's not 
they're 100% correct. Okay. And uh, according to Chinese translation, you don't want to remember others' mistakes all the time. Also, you don't want to hate someone who's doing something wrong. Okay. You don't agree with the, uh, this person's action, but you don't want to increase your anger toward this person because you wanted to find a solution to help this person. With anger, how can you help? So that's why it's important for us to be aware that when you wanted to criticize someone around you, ask yourself, what kind of attitude do you have? You love this person, you hate this person. If you discover, I don't like this person today, I have anger inside me, don't talk to this person at this moment. Many years ago, <clears throat> one day I came back to the temple. I discovered there's a bulletin board next to uh, the gate. I did ask a nun from the temple, go to the front, clean the bulletin board. Uh, the, uh, the glass is, uh, not, not the glass, the fiberglass see-through fiberglass is uh, getting, um, what do you call it, dirty. Do, uh, do, uh, it, it's not clear for, uh, for people to read the uh, information in the back. I said, go and uh, clean. But somehow, that day, when I came back, I saw the bulletin board. She did a messy job. <laughs> I believe she used wrong tools like the uh, steel scratch. Clean the ball. Actually, she destroyed the whole <laughs> see-through uh, uh, fiberglass. And we cannot use it, use it anymore. Suddenly, I discovered I had a little anger about this. <laughs> I'm not satisfied. <laughs> mm. I wanted to uh, find this nun, talk to her, say something okay, about this. But after a few seconds, I told myself, my attitude is not suitable to talk to this nun today. Let me wait for tomorrow, not today. I still wanted to deal with her. Tell her, don't use steel scrap, uh, what do you call it? Scrap. Yeah to clean this kind of a material. You are going to damage the material. But with anger, I couldn't manage myself to use uh, uh, the kind of uh, 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 comfortable words toward this uh, nun. So I say, I don't want it to increase my negative feelings. Also, I don't want it to uh, stimulate her negative feelings because of this. I do want to change her uh, uh, way of you know, doing this kind of a job, but I don't want to use my anger to deal with this situation. So I wait. I told myself, let's wait for one day at least. But somehow I forgot next day. <laughs> <laughs> I wait about two months. One day, oh, the bulletin board. <laughs> so I called the nun to me. I said, OK, did you know you uh, destroyed the material? She said, uh, Rambo, I noticed that I uh, did something you know, uh, wrong there. I uh, damaged the ball. I feel sorry. I said, OK, you understand that that is not the right way to clean the ball. OK, th that's what will be fine. So within a few minutes, we talk to each other. That's fine. So now today, I wanted to ask you, do you want to be a happy person? Yes? Or you don't? <laughs> if you don't, maintain your anger, that's, that's fine. <laughs> if you feel, feel, I don't want to be a miserable person, don't carry anger with you. Don't carry anger with you. In Taiwan, uh, oh, oh, there is a, a, a story. <coughs> <clears throat> Long time ago, 
I don't know in what year, there was a <coughs> newlywed couple. This gentleman, his name uh, is uh, Jacques Russell, a philosopher in uh, France. Jacques Russell. Jacques Russell. Rousseau? Rousseau. 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 Yeah, Jacques Rousseau. She married a beautiful lady. <coughs> but somehow, after the exchange of vows, during the wedding party, uh, this newlywed lady, Alice, carried another young man. Jacques, I wanted to let you know I fall in love with this this man today. So you are not my husband, husband anymore. In front of all guests, that was difficult for this uh, groom. It was difficult. So <clears throat> on the day, uh, she was very, he was very embarrassed you know, in front of all guests. His newly wet wife uh, fell in love with another young man. How a man can accept this kind of uh, reality? So he left the party and decided to leave France. And uh, he said, I wanted to change my life. I wanted to build up a new life. I don't want to be trapped in this kind of a situation, this kind of uh, uh, anger or uh, you know, uncomfortable uh, feelings. She went to Germany, she went to, uh, he went to uh, Germany and all other European nations. And uh, he became a famous philosopher, a scholar. She studied, he studied hard. And uh, after 30 years, he went back to France and uh, talking to an old friend. Okay. The old friend told him, uh, he said, uh, do you know the, uh, the life of Alice right now? Oh, I didn't contact her. Jacob said, I didn't con contact her. I wanted to let you know. She's living in, in a very miserable life. Also, she's very poor. And uh, she argues with her husband all the time. She's not a happy person. And uh, Jacques said, uh, if she's very poor, now I have some money. Please take this money to her. Help her. Don't tell her I give this mon money to her. And uh, this friend said, Jacques, why don't you hate this lady? Oh, it's not necessary. When I hate this la lady, I just like a person who's carrying a bag of dead uh, rats. Yeah. It's rotten uh, and it's smelly. It, 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 it's not, 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 uh, not good. If I have anger, hatred inside me, just like a person who's carrying a bag of dead rats with him all the time, my life is very... Uh, Oh, what do you call? Stinky. stinky. <laughs> also, you will be stinky too. You will be stinky. That's right. If I have if I have anger to talk to you, yeah, you are going to be affected from my anger. You feel oh, verbal honey is not easy to talk to, you know. And, and uh, so, think about this, and. Uh, what kind of life that you wanted to have, okay? Uh, let me use about three or four minutes just uh, conclude my uh, my uh, my talk. <coughs> Before I stop, I do want to remind you that in my study, in my practice, I feel it's important for us to be a a skillful kind person, not to be just a kind person. We have to be a skillful, kind
kind person, be able to, you know, uh, deal with all kinds of uh, changes, be a skillful, kind person, not just simply show your kindness to others, be able to manage yourself, be able to control all kinds of uh, uh, changes. Yeah. So in my understanding, I feel we have to be able to build up three kinds of uh, effort. One is be able to make a good decision whenever we are kind to others. Be able to make a good decision, not wrong decision. I wanted to be kind to people, but making right decision, good decisions. Okay. For example, today, if Judy asked me, Venerable Hang Yi, I'm going to fly to Colorado again. Can you drive, could you drive me to the airport? If my physical condition is perfect, I have a clear mind. Of course, yes, I'm going to take you to the airport. How about today I feel dizzy? I feel headache, you know, headaches in my mind, and I, I'm not able to drive. I cannot drive Judy. I cannot make decision that, yes, I will drive you. It's going to be dangerous. Making good decisions, okay, out of kindness, okay. And uh, be skillful on this, and also be able to manage on the process. Sometimes we have conditions to support you. Sometimes if you wanted to be good to others, we may not be able to have all kinds of right conditions all the time. You are able to manage yourself. Overcome from difficulties in order to achieve the goal. So making decision is one step. Be able to manage to deal with all kinds of conditions is another step. Finally, even you feel it's difficult to be kind. It's difficult to practice generosity. I still wanted to insist on this kind of a practice. I don't want to give up. Today, I'm still, you know, uh, working on this and uh, uh, encourage myself on this path. Even though managing a temple, managing the uh, center's uh, activity is, is difficult. It's, it does require a lot of effort. Sometimes I feel, yeah, I may not have the kind of energy, but I still insist on what I can do. No give up. Okay. It's difficult. <laughs> right now, let me open the floor for you. So let's discuss what you have in your mind to share your own experience. Because this is not just talking. You have to have experiences. How can we improve ourselves? Yeah, uh, eradicate anger and also practice generosity toward others equally.